would like to uh, first take the opportunity to uh, thank the uh, GCSP leadership team who I have had the honor of uh, working with and uh, now collaborating uh, in events like this uh, and also as part of the courses uh, that uh, are delivered on a daily basis. And I'm very proud to have that opportunity to bring uh, my experiences in designing impactful change within organizations. And when we use the, the term change, that should resonate with the term that we're going to be talking about now, innovation. So I think uh, that Professor Aladam, where were you? I th you did a, an incredible job of describing two worlds, particularly the world which we refer to as the turbulent world. And we always have in our minds and in our culture this idea that there is a steady state out there, that there is a place that is, is stable, where we're able to plan, we're able to control. But again, as you pointed out, because of the level of interdependency, because of technology, and because of awareness, we are very much in a turbulent world. And I suspect that the majority of us are in that world. Is anyone not there? Anyone in that ideal, utopia, stable state? OK, good, so I can continue. <laughs> Uh, this is a really important point because the frame of mind when you're in a turbulent world is quite different than when you're in a steady state. And what I am uh, very pleased when uh, Christian asked me to come to, to speak, this prize, the evening that we are here together, is all about how do you innovate, how do you change in that turbulent world. And the prize, I might have changed a little bit of the, uh, the text. Okay? Seeking fresh and imaginative solutions to reduce suffering and make the world a safer place. Is that fair? OK. Now, what I would like to put forth is our responsibility to develop creative leaders who can thrive in a turbulent world. This is actually confirmed with the stories I'd like to share with you of three innovators. One of them you've heard about, Jan Schiele, okay, who was last year's prize winner. I'm going to introduce you to two more, Petit Petzel, Clean Water Access Solution. Okay, you should recognize the name when I show it to you. Uh, and a case study that I recently came across, which is a wonderful example of innovation in a turbulent world, focusing specifically on a public service initiative to change awareness of newborn health, particularly in Mumbai. So uh, this was a shot one year ago. I understand it was at the Kapinski. Okay. You see Jan uh, there in the middle with his uh, prize. And I had the opportunity to uh, speak with Jan directly. And he actually gave me a little bit of background on how he started his company, which came out of a conversation that he had with a UN representative who was explaining the challenges of human rights negotiators, the amount of paperwork the complexity of rulings, all of those challenges having an impact on the negotiator's ability to come to solutions through negotiations that would have a benefit for human rights. And, and from that, he developed his prize-winning uh, app, Children and Armed Conflict. Okay. Uh, he was, again, extremely appreciative of the prize that he won, and that has, as Christian, you pointed out, given him the opportunity to work with 
other challenges or wicked problems with women, peace and security, alternative energy. He had also said to me that he is currently putting together a proposal to work on changing the situation in Syria, focusing on human rights there. So very inspirational. And, and, and with that inspiration, I asked him, okay, uh, Jan, what is driving you? You're in a turbulent world. You have challenges to deal with. What motivates you to go through that and have an impact? He said to me, you know, Joseph, it just makes sense. It's right. And because it makes sense, he was able to stay dedicated. Resilience is a, a popular word today, and I think dedication, conviction, resilience, this is something that he's been demonstrating. Getting close to the people. He actually spent time understanding the challenges of those negotiators. And that was what gave him the insights to create his solution. Never stop innovating. Clearly, this is an individual that has it, uh, has it in his, his DNA. Uh, and this was an interesting one, which we're going to come back to uh, towards the end of, of this uh, short talk. He sees himself as part of a change generation. Okay, Don't forget that. Part of a change generation. Now, I'd like to share with you another example of innovation. Okay? Now, this was focused on the challenge of accessible water. Does anyone recognize either of those two products? So both of these products were designed to bring clean water to where it's needed. Seems pretty obvious, but if you think about it, one of the major challenges of clean water is actually getting to the clean water, particularly in remote locations. And this design, both of these designs, excuse me, that were developed at around the same time in the mid-90s, solved the problem by actually making it easier to transport water. Okay? Many of you have probably seen the photographs of uh, men and women you know, carrying drums of water on their heads. Okay? It's not good for the spinal cord. So this had you know, significant uh, health impact. Now, what's interesting is about the Q-Drum. Q-Drum, total cost of production, $65. The Hippo Roller, 125 US dollars. Which one was more successful? And success, when you talk about innovation, is measured in the number of people who benefit from it. How many think the Q-drum? Q-drum. Hippo? Hippo, we all believe it's Hippo? Okay, any idea why? Hmm? More water, it actually carries about the, about the same. Push forward, okay. Yeah, all right, so yeah, it is a little bit easier. Sorry? Definitely. I, I was debating. I, you know, I couldn't find a, a photo. That, so, so that's right. There's a fun aspect. All, all of those are right. The real value that the Hippo Roller bought was that it actually gave the users opportunities that went beyond just getting clean water. Okay? So the, you'll see the device here. Uh, easy to take out the water. That also has a filter, okay, an economic enabler, so the push actually can turn into a stand. Uh, and then the last one here, you can obviously see it can be used for other ways to transport. Okay? And this is a very good example of creativity in the innovation process because of the improvements that happen throughout their daily lives. Okay, so the last example a project about newborn health in Mumbai. This project actually began in the mid-2000s, and the intent was that 
going into the slums in Mumbai to increase the, or to decrease uh, child uh, mortality, these researchers had the notion to go into discussions with uh, expectant mothers to raise their awareness of the importance of newborn health. In 2012, they produced their results. After going into approximately 422 uh, sessions or workshops like this, the results unfortunately demonstrated very little impact and it was measured against any changes in infant mortality. This, order, this, this actually was documented in an article and the author of the article, and I quote, came away with an understanding that making a difference in the world is hard, often messy. Now the reason this is an important event in this initiative was that the innovators didn't stop there. They decided to take this as an opportunity to pivot, to learn from what they went through, and to recreate a new type of initiative, which was based not on educating, but actually providing services, so very clear focused services that would fill the needs of both the expectant mothers and their newborn children. So a change happened. Now to promote the change, because obviously if you're going to uh, relaunch a service, you've got to do it in a different and unique way. And fortunately, uh, they were able to partner with the Gates Foundation. And I'd like to share with you the video that summarizes what they learned, how they were going to create a new impression of this important service. very different a way to promote a very important service offering within Mumbai and an example of the importance of being not only innovative but creative. So what does creative leadership look like and why is it, uh, in, in my view, the critical difference between an idea and innovation? The critical factor in enabling leaders to make a difference. Everyone that we've seen, and also I believe all of the finalists and submissions, you know, probably that the, the jury has walked through, there was all, all reflected a problem, a wicked challenge that had some important meaning for society. They were imagining possibilities. They weren't accepting the way things currently were. So Jan Sheila didn't accept the way negotiators had to fumble through papers and try to find the important information to help empower their negotiations. They all found a way to identify with the individuals and give them meaning. 
The last example, newborn health, clearly empowering uh, women and children. And of course, being able to visualize and communicate. So not just coming up with the idea, but being able to show it in a compelling way. All of the innovators put forth propositions they would try. When they would try, they may fail, but then they would learn and improve on it. By adapting and being agile, right, another popular word, they actually showed that they could learn. That's a very different way of leading from what we are used to in the past. Because in the past, we wouldn't admit failure. We wouldn't admit that we can learn. We wouldn't change in midstream because something didn't work out. But that's the way that innovators are able to create diverse communities, that they're able to bring people together. And again, the GCSP being you know, a, a fundamental place and pedagogy to bring people together and build those communities. Uh, and, and lastly, I mentioned the importance of resilience, that passion that the Q-Drum inventor, even though he hasn't had the same impact, they are still looking for funding. Okay? It has not stopped him. And this session uh, is a good example of celebrating creative leadership. And I thought it'd be worthwhile just to show you that there's a whole creative generation that is here. I was uh, recently reading online Forbes magazine, okay? and they have a yearly uh, publication about 18 innovators under 18. Okay? So I'm gonna, so Michaela, that's a picture with uh, Barack Obama, Sush Mbaji, and Hale Thomas. Just wanna read you three quotes. Michaela on the left, she has created a company called Me and the Bees Lemonade. Okay. Quote, in 20 years, I will be a social entrepreneur. Sush in the middle has created a low-cost Braille printer that actually translates directly from the web into Braille and prints it. His quote, innovate for the right reasons. Money is not one of them. And lastly, Hale, she has a company called Happy, which is focused on improving health and wellness of children. Her quote, in 20 years, I will motivate youth to put their passion into action. Now, these are just three examples that were readily available on Forbes. Obviously, there are many, many more out there. So I would ask all of you to think about what is that wicked problem that you think should be solved or addressed? Do you have someone that you can mentor, that you can help encourage them when they fail, that you can guide them to the right people, that you can celebrate their successes, that you can console them when they fail? And lastly, your role in communicating and actually being an innovator it has to happen. I had a conversation with Carl about his fried duck restaurant okay, that brings reformed Islamic militants into an environment where they can recreate their lives. Okay. David okay, promoting a new technology for, visual, uh, for video editing with the UNHR. I mean, these are the kind of examples that we all need to be role modeling. And if we're able to do that, then I believe we will be able to help develop that generation of creative uh, leaders and meet the objectives, not only of the prize, but also of the GCSP to improve the well-being of society. Thank you.